G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with DR and welcome to the round 23 Supercoach stock market video. It is the grand final edition. Congratulations if you have made it to any of your league grand finals this year. Really, really fantastic effort. And hopefully, if you're watching this video, you do have one or two trades still up your sleeve. I'm certainly not that lucky. I didn't conserve my trades like some of you may have. So congratulations if you do. That's gonna really help you this week because we do need to be prepared for even more carnage. We saw what happened last week. The super coach gods, for some reason, were not happy with us, and they decided to strike down some of our favorite premium players, particularly in the back line. It was just such a tough week last week. But hopefully, they are a little bit kinder to us, but we do need to prepare for the worst just in case. Now, I do need to start off by giving a huge thank you to two people in particular, Spills and Carl Meany, for your very generous donations. It's going to go towards the Cancer Council. I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much for pressing that thanks button. The money will go to a really, really good cause. So shout out to both of you guys. Make sure you're following um, them on Twitter as well. Terrific people. Really, really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Uh, what I will also be doing uh, during the stocky this week is going through some individual player slides, particularly in the midfield. Just looking at some of those players that may have a nice history against their opponent or maybe a not so great history against their opponent. And also look at a couple of those premiums that are absolutely in red hot form. So apart from that, guys, hope that you're all well. Enjoy the video, and this will be the last one for 2021. We might do a review, though, next week as well. Take care. Hope you enjoy. So I've started off by sorting by around 22 points. Only three players, as you can see on the screen here, actually hit triple figures last week, and that was Crispy with a 124, been in good form, Daniel with a 112, and Rory Laird. We've all got him with a 105. So that was why it was such a dire situation last week. You know, even our cover, Tommy Highmore and blokes like this didn't get a game. And, you know, we had Mills, we had Lloyd, Stewart, May, all out. So yeah, just a terrible situation for us last week. Hopefully this week we can see some much bigger scores, particularly with a couple of our returning stars, fingers crossed. But uh, apart from that, you got Dawson, Maynard, Andrews, Weedering. Nothing to write home about there uh, with a 72. Got Richie. Now, this was a really low score for Rich. He's been ultra consistent during the year. Do not let that score put you off. Only 17 kicks. So the first time, I think, since round 14, where he's gone under 20 kicks. Yeah, I think that he'll bounce back. I think West Coast are really struggling. And um, yeah, expect this man to have a pretty solid game, I think, this week. And then you've got Mills. Don't know if he returns this week. Stewart, he'll be out for the season. And Sicily, obviously, Hasn't been playing for the entire year. So uh, that is sorting by total, uh, no, round 22 points. And then we'll look at the three-round average. So apart from last week, who's up there? It's the same sort of names. Look, one name I will mention is Harris Andrews. Now, usually he'd be playing on Josh Kennedy. This week, Kennedy's out. So he'll have a little bit more freedom. You've got Adams coming back into the side. You've got Darcy Gardner there as well. And who are they going to have up forward? Well, they have Darling. Allen, I'm not too sure who the other two will be. So, yeah, maybe expect Harris Andrews to have a little bit of a day out with some of those intercept marks. But we want him marking it. We don't want him punching the ball or spoiling the ball. So, uh, yeah, maybe Andrews may be a little bit of a sneaky pick if you do have a trade up your sleeve. So, we'll take a look now at the next lot of players. So, we've got the 400 to 500k players here. And if you take a look at this, around 22 points, we see a lot more in the double figure range here. But remember, there are a lot more players in this range. So Alia Alia, 137. If we take a look at his three round average, that's a 105. So yeah, pretty good there, particularly for that price, just over 400K. So if you've got something around that mark, yeah, you could take a stab at him for sure, I think, coming up against the Dogs this week. Uh, Josh Bruce is out. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting matchup, see what Alia does. But I think he'll continue to intercept uh What's the season been? 87.8. So, yeah, you wouldn't call him a great selection, I don't think. But at the same time, he's had a pretty solid season with some nice games thrown in. But too many lower games from time to time, unfortunately. Uh, Jaden Short, he really bounced back. He's been one of those up and down type picks. But 126 last week was great. And look at this. Two other Richmond players straight under him. Uh, Vlaston with a 118 and then Baker with a 115. So, do you take a stab on one of these Richmond boys? Uh, you've got, well... They're a pretty similar price range, aren't they? What's that, around 30K in between? So, yeah, do you? I just can't 
say with any great faith that any of these blokes are going to repeat that performance. But yeah, give it a stab if you want to. Uh, Cunningham, Ridley with a 108. So that's really good because recently, yeah, his form has been down a little bit, which has uh, been unfortunate for owners. But he did bounce back with a nice 100, which was good. Uh, coming, Ryan Haynes. Yeah, so all half decent selections. Uh, Witherden coming up against his old mob, the Lions, this week. Uh, with Hearn out of the side, this could mean good things, I think, for Witherden. Uh, 401,000. Do you go him? Do you go Aaliyah? Yeah, completely up to you. Uh, you've got more of a person that will take some of the kick-ins, I think, and someone that will intercept. Uh, but Witherden can be a disposal pig at times as well and played in the right role. Uh, Henderson, no. McGovern won't be playing this week. Lacocious, big boy. Who will be coming up? Nank. Maybe a shout-out. McAvoy. Um, Whitfield, he's been really disappointing. Um, yeah, Duday. Then we go into sort of some half dodgy territory there anyway but um yeah maybe a leer from that lot one of the richmond boys or a ridley i'd say uh on to the next lot of players here so this is a little bit surprising daniel howe three round average of 93 as well so uh yeah do you take a stab on him if you've got between three and 400k yeah, maybe you wouldn't be overly confident salem under 400k now. So he's consistently been above the 500k mark during the season. Had a really underrated season. Salem, still a relative pod. Yeah, 5.2% of sides. And yeah, 94.5 on the season for an average. So yeah, it could present some good value there. How, the, how is he going to go against Geelong? I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, maybe a shout out at that price. Dan Houston as well, 91. Talk about up and down. Yeah, I mentioned he was a burn man for me last season. I think if you have selected him really at any stage this season, he's been a bit of a burn man also for you, which is unfortunate. So a little bit up and down. Capable of anything, though. Dan Houston. Uh, burn Jones. Dougal Howard, the kicking king. Uh, Dre Kelly. Ruffhead. Hayden Young, good to see him playing footy again. Shepard's going to be out. Wacky Ash. Uh, we've seen Zach Guthrie have a massive game a few weeks ago, haven't we? But uh, Bo's out. Sad. Yeah, unfortunate to see him. Uh, pretty distraught in the sidelines, wasn't it? Yeah, look, I don't think there's too many other names here that really fill me with any sort of great confidence. Uh, three round average. Who's in form overall? So Young there, there we go, with the 94. Guthrie still had that big scoring system, obviously. Houston Rivers. Decent player, Rivers. Uh, but can you rely on him? I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a whole heap to see there. And then we'll go to the bargain selections. So under, what's this? Under 300k we've got here. So Durham, he killed me in the league match last week. 93. Yeah, congratulations to the young fella. He looks like a real player to me. I think Essendon have done extremely well there. So uh, yeah, from, from day one. I've, I've really liked Durham. So a 93, certainly don't think you'll repeat that. But if you've got around the 200K mark for some reason, just above 220 you need for Durham, then go for it, I think. You know, if recent form, great, you take that. Uh, Cozzy with an 87 last week. Orazio, Kalachi. Now, he had a really nice last quarter in particular, Kalachi. Watch that game pretty closely. Uh, Watson, McKay, yeah. So we're not looking at any... Great scores here. Hibbard used to be a great super coach selection back in the day. Uh, Francis, no, but he was great for me at the start of the season. But some really nice scores on field when I needed him. Lots of us got Bianco 40. Yeah, it's not adding a heap, is it? Stars 33. He's an All Australian, I think, this year. Starsevich might be a little bit biased there. But yeah, look, not a lot to see there. Let's look at the three-rounder. So, Briggsy, yeah, didn't play. Yours, Young. Walker. No, just not a heap to see there, is there? Uh, how about average for the year? Hunter Clark. Yeah, so look at these DMPs there. Lockie Shoal. No, look, not much to see. So, uh, we'll leave it there, I think, and get on to the midfielders. We'll take a look at the big dogs that will set you back over 500k. I will go through some of the players on this list, and I also do have some individual slides on some particular players that I would like to highlight this week. So 
Dangerfield up the top, obviously available as a forward. We'll talk about him when we get to the forward section. JL, so he's bounced back. He's had a pretty poor last month, Jared Lyons, after a really consistent season. There was one point in time where we were saying that he just will not go below the ton. But yeah, it has been a pretty poor last month, and that's reflective of his price now, 565000 after being above the 600 k mark for a large majority of the season. But yeah, he could be a really solid selection this week against an undermanned West Coast side. I'll keep on saying an undermanned West Coast side because they are missing a host of star players, particularly this week. Uh, so I think he will be a solid selection. Luke Park has been a real pod, 3.2% of sides. My good mate Brent that I talk a lot about, he's got Lukey Parker in his side and has actually been one of the selections that's worked out well. So shout out to you, bloke. Uh, well done on the Parker selection. Yeah, he could certainly be someone to bring in, particularly given the fact he's coming up against the Suns this week. We know that Miller goes in pretty hard, but apart from him, there hasn't been too many... Other players, I think Noah Anderson, he's been in some okay form, but uh, yeah, certainly you won't have too much competition there, Luke Park, on the weekend. Uh, Kelly, I'll talk about in a minute. Sam and Agola, now shout out to my man Julian, coach of the Crazy Frogs, who was the number one ranked side for the first three weeks, I think, from memory. He brought Sam and Agola in for Dustin Martin, what was that, three, four weeks ago now. Was looking okayish for a little bit, we're thinking, oh, maybe not. And then he's really bounced back, rewarded Julian with a 145. So his five-round average now is basically right close to the 100, so 99.2. Terrific selection in the end, mate. He's worked out brilliantly, particularly given the fact that he's only in 1.4% of sides. How's he going to go against Melbourne this week? Not too sure, but a really inspired selection there, I think. Um, what's he even doing in there, in that price range? Not sure how he snuck in there. What's my filter on? Uh, oh, I've got 100 to... Okay, sorry. I'll just change that filter back. Manigola shouldn't have even been in there. But that's how well he's playing. He's right up there with these other blokes here. I'll get rid of him for now. Uh, Jack McRae now. I'll tell you what. If you don't have him for any reason, and look, this is going to be a really bizarre circumstance if it's a case, and you've got enough money to get him into your side this week if you don't own him, just bring this man in. He's been absolutely phenomenal for me. And I'll talk about him in a minute in a different player slide, an individual player slide. Uh, Guthrie, 133. He's really hit form, hasn't he? After it was looking like his season was done and dusted, just couldn't get enough of the ball. He's really, really hit hard. And what's his five rounder now? 121 and a 126 for a three rounder. So, yeah, Guthrie, if you manage to hold on to him, then he's rewarded you for sure. Uh, Libba there. Uh, real pod type selection, 1.6% of sides. But Traka, he's gone really well lately, hasn't he? So three-rounder of 128, five-rounder of 120. Could be a solid selection, but you are paying over 600 k for him. I'd probably rather some of the other blokes here. Titch, I'll talk about. Fiorini, now 119, three-rounder of 117, a five-rounder of 119.4. Where on earth did this come from? Yeah, if you are one of the 1.3% of coaches that own him, I know my son Max owns him for some weird reason, he just likes the name, then, yeah, you'd be absolutely wrapped, particularly when he was around that 300k mark, um, what was it, about five weeks ago, I think. So inspired selection there, been terrific. Uh, Zorko, he's been in great form. Talk about him as he's a forward later on. Uh, Adams with a 116, yeah, 508, but you just don't know if he's going to go off injured. While she's always going to be a good selection, uh, as will Bont, but look with Bont, you look at his five and three round average, 110 and 108, nothing spectacular there. McCluggage, he could be a decent selection at just over the 500k mark. Parrish, wow, what a season he's had. Look, recently, yeah, he's been down a three rounder, only 105, so that's really poor from him. But if you look at that season average there, it's 116. Five rounder though, close to 100, so he's really dipped in form now. You could pick him up this week if you've got a, a trade up your sleeve and uh, hope that he just has one of those big monsters again. Uh, Heppel, back of the side, 110, underrated season from him. If he was available as a back, for example, yeah, he would be a really highly owned player. But at the moment, yeah, still almost 10% of sides, just never going to be one of those uber-type premium picks. Uh, Boak, yeah, I've got him in my side, really disappointing. Uh, Zeret with the 107. Yeah, you could go him at just over 600 coming up against the Pies. think he could score pretty well. Ollie Wines in Brownlow contention. A real smoky, I think. Or is he even a smoky? He must be up there, I think, with the favourites. My man Took, I'll talk about him uh, with an individual slide. Same as Steele. Same as Oliver. 
Carl Amon, really talented type player. Uh, Jones, Simkin, Crouch, what will happen to him next year? Not too sure. Yeah, that's pretty much all that we've got there, I think. Uh, just quickly, we'll just rank by three-rounder. So who we're looking at here? My man, Jack McRae. A few really familiar faces here. Brayshaw, he'll be back this week, which is really handy for owners. Petraka been in great form. Yeah, Lions, as we mentioned, Parker, uh, Walsh, Sorco types. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll quickly get into the individual player sides, and I'll talk about some of these premiums going into this week. We'll start off with a couple of players that are in red-hot form at the moment. The first man, obviously, being Jack McRae. He's been my captain for the last six weeks. Do yourself a favor. If you do have Jack McRae in your side, put the vice captain on him on the Friday night against Port Adelaide. He shouldn't let you down. He projected to go around to 131, and I think that's a pretty accurate projection, in my opinion, anyway. And if you don't have him, you've got to trade up your sleeve, and you can somehow get him in. Absolutely do it. Look at what he's done since around 15. You know, we're talking 137, 138. His lowest score is a 116, 124, 146, 131, 154, and a 136 in round 22 against the Hawks as well. He's just a super premium, the absolute definition of an uber premium. And as I've mentioned a couple of times already, he just will not let you down. So I'm pretty confident that I can just lock in his vice captaincy score this week, not have to think about it too much. And this man has just rewarded me time after time. So he's an absolute lock to start in my side next year. I highly suggest that you look to do the same thing. And I'm expecting him to give us another 130 plus this week. The next man I've got here is Took Miller. Probably my favorite player in the comp that doesn't play for Brisbane. And again, we'll take a look at his scores going back from round 16. 153, 143, 120, 115, 142, 155. Then a lowly score of a 103 last week against Essendon. That was a bit of an outlier, as you can see here. Apart from that, 115 has been his lowest score in the last couple of months. So you'll notice a symbol up at the top right-hand corner there, a 2022 lock also. This man will be the other man that I select right after Jack McRae. Absolute lock to be in my side next year. I'll explain why in another video. I will do a play review video on Miller because I just absolutely love the selection. And particularly going into next year, I just think that we're just locking him into our sides without thinking about it too much. But if you look at the history against Sydney, 113, 102, and a 62. Remember, in 2019, he did play a little bit of a different role. He was more of a defensive type player rather than attacking type player, getting, you know, rather than getting the ball himself. So don't take that into account. What you should take into account is his recent form. And as you can see there, yeah, he just will not go below three figures. An absolute tackling beast. Work rate is absolutely second to none. So Took Miller, I absolutely love as a selection. The next bloke is Clary Oliver, and the title I've got there is History is on my side. Well, why is that? It's because he really enjoys playing against Geelong. We'll look at his scores going all the way back from 2018, a 123, 141, and a lower score in the last three years of a 111. And his average down there at the Cattery is actually 134, so he really enjoys playing at that venue also. We take a look at his last five weeks, so some really, really nice scores there, and then the last couple of weeks has tapered off. 139, a 144, a 166. So excellent three weeks there. You'd love to have him as your captain or your vice captain. And then unfortunately, a 98 and a 93. So hasn't been in great form the last couple against the Eagles and the Crows. But if you look at that history against Geelong, I think that he'll really, really want to get up for this game. Is he going to get tagged by an O'Connor type? Possibly, I'm not too sure. But a projected score of 142 suggests that, yeah, he should have a pretty solid game. Will he get around that 142? Well, maybe. I'm not too sure. But you should be able to lock in, hopefully, around a 120-plus from Clary this week. So history's on his side. He enjoys playing against Geelong. Look to get him into your side if you don't have him. Or look to possibly get him in your vice-captain or your captain's loophole. The next bloke that's got a little bit of history on his side coming up against his opponent this week is Lockie Neal. So as we know, a really underpass season from the 2020 Brownlow medalist. But remember, that has been derailed by a range of different injuries from ankle, back, calf. Yeah, it just has not been his year, unfortunately. We looked at his last three weeks, 64, 70, 88. His season average hasn't even hit three figures for a season average at this stage of the season, which is just an absolute shock to me. Not at this stage of the season, given the fact that we know what he's been through. But if you had have said this to me at the start, 
yeah, I just wouldn't have believed you. I've said absolutely no way that that could happen. But 474600 is just an amazing price tag for what this man can produce when he's fit, when he's healthy, and when he's on. So we take a look at his scores from 2018 up to 2020 against West Coast, a 151, a 127, and a 166. His average at the Gabba is 118, just a tick above that. So there's a lot to like about Lockie Neal playing at the Gabba against the Eagles. But the thing we don't like is obviously his recent form. That three-round average of 74, yeah, it's absolutely terrible. But I'll tell you what, this man will be looking to tune up just before the start of the finals. And I'm expecting him to get a really, really decent score. I'll put it out there. I reckon it's going to be a 125 plus from Lockie this week. I'm just expecting him to bounce back in a pretty big way. So this week could be the week to jump on him. There's only one week left. Yeah, if you've uh, got the Cooners to do it, I think that you could be rewarded if you get Neil in this week. Now this bloke, uh, Josh Kelly, loves to feast on his opponent this week. He's coming up against Carlton. So unfortunately, a zero in 2020 didn't get up for that week. But if you look at the two rounds prior to that, 2019, a 131, and a massive 205 in 2018. Are they going to look to tag this week? I'm not too sure, but that 148 last week fills us with a little bit of confidence that this man could deliver us a really, really big score. Has been underwhelming in the last month, apart from that last week with 148. But again, this is the type of player who has a massive ceiling. So if you're looking to go someone different, maybe that your opponent doesn't have any super coach grand final matchup this week, then Josh Kelly could deliver, particularly after that recent week that we've seen that 148 and the fact that he is playing against Carlton. So uh, yeah, a nice 205 would be lovely. I am a Josh Kelly owner, but just throwing his name out there, he loves to feast on Carlton maybe look to get him in this week. But remember, at the same time, he could just roll his ankle and uh, give you an 80-type score. And last man that we'll take a look at here is Jack Steele. So a man that has absolutely murdered me for not owning him this year. Tears of joy after his score last week of only 100. And this, remember, was his halftime score as well. No form of injury. Um, just a really, really poor second half, which was very un-Jack Steele-like. But 691,200, we are talking the big bucks here. And I think that this week may not actually be the week, even if you can afford this man, to get him in. We look at the season average, 125.9, phenomenal. Three-round average, 137.7. And we'll look back all the way from round 16. And this is why it's killed me not owning this bloke. You know, 140s, are just standard from Jack Steele. 154, 149, 145, 109, 158, 155, and then unfortunately for owners, a 100 last week. But this is the thing. I think that Fremantle is this man's kryptonite. We look at these scores here from 2018 up to 2020, sorry, 2019 up to 2020 because he played them twice in 2019. But a 54 and 85 and then an 87. So a couple of those were played at Mars. The other one was played over in WA. So high score of 87 in his last three encounters with Frio. Yeah, that certainly doesn't fill you with confidence, particularly his last half from last week also. So if you are not a Jack Steele owner, I just would not be jumping on this week. I'd be looking at one of those other options. I know that most of you probably already have him. You're not silly like me. You've been smart enough to bring him in at some stage of the season. But I just do have a feeling that if Jack Steele is ever going to pump out a poor score, that this may be the week. Uh, knowing my luck, he's going to make me look absolutely silly. He's a very proud man. And uh, possibly after his poor half last week, he's going to come out and absolutely smash it out this week. But yeah, history suggests that this is probably a week where he will score probably lower than what we're used to him scoring anyway. Now we'll get into the midfielders between the four to 500k range. And Sammy Managola, I've already had a chat about him. He managed to sneak his way in to that premium midfield discussion, but 145 points last week, as we mentioned. Yep, been really, really solid. Sarong and Mundy, two of the Frio boys, and talk about at different stages of their career. We talk about the old and the young here, but Mundy with 134, he's had a really, really fine season, particularly for someone at his age. What's his three rounds now? 111, five rounds are really disappointing with an 85, so had a couple of good uh, games in there. Others must have been quite poor. 
but his average over the season is a 101. At the start of the season, he was in the top five midfielders for, I think, around the first five weeks. But after that, he has unfortunately taped off a little bit. But that's what we expect with a champion at this age. Uh, Sarong, on the other hand, really coming into his career now, showing great rate of improvement as well. He's going to be an absolute superstar going into the future. A 110 for a three-round average, that 135 over the weekend and a five rounder just under the hundred there. So if you want to go with one of the Freo boys, they are playing St Kilda this week. Who knows what they're going to score, but uh, going off last week's form, yeah, looking really good. Uh, Timmy Taranto there sitting fourth on the list in regards to scores from last week. Look, is he going to score another four goals? I don't think so, but look, I'd be a little bit worried given the fact he didn't spend much time, if any time, I'm, I'm not too sure, in the actual midfield, but yeah, with the 131 coming up against Carlton, they got absolutely demolished against Port last week. He does have the potential to actually hit the scoreboard on a few occasions. Will he do that? I'm not too sure. But at 437, you could take a bit of a punt on him. Uh, Kennedy is at real pod, particularly with, um, uh, what's his name? I've even forgotten his name, Paddy Cripps. That's how well Cripps has played this year. I've forgotten the bloke's name. Been super disappointing, hasn't he, Cripper? But uh, Kennedy, he's really filled that role. A real pod type selection, if you want to go there. Uh, I've skipped the list again. I'm going to stop doing that. Apologies. Uh, who we got there? Benny Keys. I love this man. Obviously, ex-Brisbane coming up against North this week. Who knows? But 125 on the cards. Another old Brisbane man, Jack Redden, coming up against the Lions this week. He'll want to put his best foot forward. Um, not too sure, though. Hasn't had a really consistent year. Uh, what is that? Yeah, 91.3. Nothing to write home about. We are looking at a lower price point, though, mind you. Uh, the seed, I think he had about 15 disposals in the first quarter last week. So hats off to him, 463,000. He's had a pretty good season as well, 96.3, uh, three-rounder of 103. Rory Sloan been a champion in the past. Just can't rely on him, though, to pump out those good scores regularly. Gaff, just, yeah, don't like this selection at all. Wouldn't go anywhere near him, but who knows this week. Could go off tap. Don't think so, though. Hopper. Decent selection. Higgins wouldn't go anywhere near. Shuey, he might do a hamstring in the opening minute, so just wouldn't do it. 425, though, you know, might be worth the risk just for a week. Smith, been really consistent. Had a week off, was it? Uh, not last week, obviously, but the week before, I think, um, just to give his old body a bit of time off going into the finals. But, yeah, really consistent year from him, particularly the back half of the year when Duncan was being out. Uh, Hewitt, yo, wouldn't go near. Selwood had a pretty good season. Uh, Drew been up and down. Anderson got a decent three-rounder, hasn't he, there with a 108. And you're looking at the wards. Lockie Neal, I've got an individual slide about. Uh, side button, talk about in the forwards. Trelaws, pressed is, no. Josh Dunkley's an interesting one. Talk about him in the forwards. Kelly, he's out this week. Uh, then you get to the DNP. So we'll quickly sort by three-round average. And he got Kennedy, the two Freo boys. No, Anderson, I did think that he had a decent three-round average. Sorry, I'll go back to that. Uh, Omira didn't play over the weekend. Shera. So look at the three Freo boys there. Been in really good form, obviously. LDU, Redden, the Seed. Yeah, and getting to some of those other names there. Look at the next price point uh, for anyone that's looking between three and 400. Zach Bailey will talk about his available as a forward. Koch with a 109. Few and far in between from him. No good. Uh, Langdon with a 109. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, you're talking, you know, you're pretty desperate here. Uh, you, uh, Ross, Ollie Florent, Shields, Rowbottom, Bolton. Uh, Bramble, hasn't he been great? Uh, taped off a little bit, hasn't he, with some of those blokes back in the team. Your hard weeks, your day types taking away that role from him a little bit. Still getting enough of it, still scoring okay. Jeremy Sharp, he's been another wonderful rookie. Rao, what's happened with him? Uh, hopefully he gets back to his best form because I was thinking generational type player last year. Just, yeah, really struggled with injury, unfortunately. Yeah, Dow, geez. Um, Sheed, Edwards, McGrath's back. Yeah, you're looking at scores in the 40s. So anyone that's scoring around the 40s, you've just got really no faith in, do you? Let's have a look at the three-rounder. Uh, you got Stack there, mid-forward. Talk about him more in the forwards. Guthrie Howe. So a few DPP players there. Then you're looking at Shield. Shields, uh, who's the next? All the Yeah, the next mid-only type player. Koch, Nunes, Cousins, yeah. Getting a bit dodgy. 
here, aren't we? Overall season average, looking at Crouch. Okay, so maybe Crouch, bit of a shout out against Frio, 92 last week. Yeah, maybe Brad Crouch, just for a week, if you're looking around that range. Uh, but possibly even one of the DPP players, I think, there. And look at the next range here. Oh, man, this, I was wrapped with this bloke last week. Finally came through in a week of need. Newcomb, uh, the tackle count was right up again, just like his debut game. So 94 from him, absolutely fantastic. Jeez, you'd hope that he keeps his spot, wouldn't you? Came in for Warpool. Yeah, surely he does after that performance. You'd have to think so. Durham is an interesting one. Talked about him. And uh, we went through the defenders. O'Halloran, Tucker, Phillips, Dev Smith. I can't stand Dev Smith. Um, just gives away some stupid frees. So, yeah, just no discipline to his game. Under 300. Well deserved to be under 300, I think. James Jordan, do you go back to the rookie well? Just for a week, if you're looking around this range. Cockatoo, great to see him playing footy. I've actually got an individual slide for Jared Berry. You probably think, why on earth is that the... Uh, you'll see why uh, in a minute. Uh, I might finish off with that actually in the midfield before we get into the rucks. Uh, McRae, Perkins, Parker. Yeah, Downey. Great to see Downey finally got a game. Uh, maybe bad for our super coach sides because, yeah, if they're looking to play him next year, then he'll be that little bit more expensive, uh, which is unfortunate. Bianco, many of us have... Uh, Good coverage last week in our back lines. Yep, yeah, no one really else there. So I will quickly talk about Jared Berry, and there's basically one reason why. Now, Berry's had a really disappointing season in 2021. Average of only 45. Remember, this has been an injury-affected pick, and I think that he may actually be a sneaky selection going into 2022, particularly at his starting price and the value that he will represent. So yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit in the preseason, but why Jared Berry this week? Well, there's one big reason, and that's because he's coming up against the West Coast Eagles. We'll take a look at his scores all the way back from 2018 up to 2020. Last three games against the Eagles, a 118, a 115, and then a 127. So this is why I suggest to take a little bit of a sneaky look at Berry going into this week. Now, if you look from rounds 19 to 22 this season, wow, a couple of scores in the 30s, a 32, 37, a 59, and a 64. But one good thing, if you look at those scores, is the fact that he has improved every week. Now, geez, you'd hope if you get a 32 that you would improve the next week if you're looking to be selected in people's sides. But again, 37, then up to a 59, 64. So hopefully he can jump that up again this week. Now, am I expecting him to go a 115, 127 type score? Of course I'm not. But look, history suggests that this is the team that Barry loves to play against. You can see in the photo there, that he's getting that contested ball. Cripps trying to bring him down, but no such luck with the big man, Jared Berry. I really, really rate him as a player, and I think when he's fit, he does have the potential to pump out 80 to 90 type scores, even in those three digits at times. And we can see there what he's done against West Coast. So if you are looking for someone around that 250 mark, you are absolutely strapped for cash. You don't know what to do. I think that Jared Berry could be a little bit of a hidden gem this week. I know that it's silly just to go off previous history against a particular opponent, particularly when you're getting scores from 30 to 64. That's been his range in the last month. But at the same time, he is a terrific player. He has been just finding his feet, I think. And he'll want to put up a really good showing in the last home and away game before the big finals this year. So Jared Berry, take a little bit of a quick look at him. On to the rucks, and as we can see, this big bad man, Sean Darcy, he's finally done it. He's now sitting right at the top of the pile for season averages for our ruckmen. So you can see there, season average of 120.9, sitting above Max Gorn at 119, and Brody Grundy at 116.9. So we thought that it would just be a matter of time this year and he's finally done it. So a massive score on the weekend. This bloke has a huge ceiling. I think he'll be a really popular R1 selection next year because we are worried that Luke Jackson may have more of a negative effect going into the future on Max Scorn's scoring potential, particularly his ceiling. Grundy, I think, is always going to be a pretty solid selection in the rucks. But as we can see, 116.9 certainly hasn't set the world on fire and a pretty disappointing season. From what we expected, I think, from Brady Grundy when we selected him right at the start of 2021. So, yeah, hats off to you, Mr. Sean Darcy. 
you may start my side next year or else I may just look at some budget options for the first time in a long time. But look, we'll get back to the round 22 points and sort by that. So you can see Stanley, a 143 last week. He came up against Rowan Marshall. So that's a super effort. But this week he will be coming up against probably the toughest combination in the AFL, Max Gorn and Luke Jackson. So certainly wouldn't be expecting a 143 from Stanley again this week. And McInerney, he's been in terrific form. So three round average now. Have a look at that, 121.3, five rounder of 120.6. So super there, but he will be coming up against the next man on this list, Nick Nat. So I don't expect him to go around the 130 mark this week. If he can get to three figures, I think that would be super. But Nick Nat, on the other hand, what do we expect with him? Anywhere from a 120 plus, I think. Depending on his time on ground, we don't know what's going to happen there. West Coast are absolutely decimated at the moment, but they've still got a few good midfielders playing. Um, be interesting to see what Nick Nat does this week. Uh, Laddams, never interested in him. Uh, you know, I think he's a peanut. Uh, Hickey, I think, sorry I've done that again, is the next man on the list here. So 107, what a terrific selection that this bloke's been. So coming up against the Suns this week, that looks really, really tempting, doesn't it? So if you are for some reason in the market for a ruck this week, you got under 500k. Hickey against Gold Coast looks really, really nice to me. And if you are a Hickey owner, if you're one of the 8.3% of coaches out there, then be expecting a pretty solid score, I think. We know what's happened uh, to the poor old Gold Coast rucks or lack of Gold Coast rucks uh, this year. Big bad Maxi, 100, right on the dot. It's just disappointing, isn't it, when we see anything really below 120 from Gorm, because that's what we've been accustomed to over the years from him. But that season average isn't even up to that 120 mark. Uh, you know, earlier on the season, those big 140s on a consistent basis, I think for about a six-week period there, we were just loving life with Max Gorn on our sides. But, yeah, then came along Mr. Luke Jackson and uh, spoiled it for all of us. So, uh, yeah, going into next year, doubt where I'll be going with Max Gorn. I just don't think that uh, he'll be a really viable selection. He'll always be one of the better ruckmen out there. And don't get me wrong, his season average still fantastic. But for what I paid for him at the start of the season, just hasn't delivered on what I thought he would. Uh, Todd Goldstein, I say this every year, but I just think he's getting a little bit old now, but 92 on the weekend. Uh, Siegel the 90, big boy already mentioned before. Grundy, yeah, pretty disappointing. Uh, the Nank coming up against Hawthorne this week. Uh, Timmy English, 82, available as a ruck forward next year, which will be really exciting. Will be an interesting selection. Talk about him in the preseason. Uh, Strawn, if you've got absolutely nothing. Uh, he's a ruck forward as well, so possibly if you're looking to do something with your swing there, yeah, that could be an interesting move um, if you've got a couple of trades up your sleeve probably to do something like that. Marshall, I still think is going to be a really good selection. Coming up against Frio this week, Sean Darcy, ouch, that could hurt, um, particularly given the fact he struggled against Stanley last week. But um, yeah, who knows with Marshall. Quick can move up forward which is good, but again, Darcy tends to push hard back as well to make it difficult for the opposition Ruckmans to actually do that uh, and move forward. So uh, yeah, this week, yeah, may not be a great week for him, but next year I'm actually going to lock him in as a Ruck forward selection, I think. Uh, Draper may tempt some people next year as well. Uh, he'll only get better and better. Coleman Jones, uh, not really. Mummy, geez, I'd, yeah, I'd love to play with Mummy. You'd love to play with Mummy, wouldn't you? <laughs> You'd walk a lot taller. With him uh, next to you, Smith, yeah, terrible. Meek, uh, saw an extension with Frio. Tracy, no. Fullerton, 26. You know, he's trying to play his role, but um, certainly can't replace what others have been doing there, particularly Hipwood. So nothing else really there in the rucks. So, uh, yeah, really the big discussion is what are we going to do next year with the rucks. So I'll talk about that in my pre-season ruck review. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'm not too keen on going with any of the big, big boys at this stage. I'd prefer to save a little bit of money in the rucks, maybe get an extra forward in and possibly load up on the midfield. But again, that's for another discussion. Uh, let's get into the forwards. So the highest scoring player in round 22 was my man, Patrick Dangerfield. Really bounced back after that really disappointing round 21 score. Wasn't his fault, obviously. Couldn't continue in the game. But what I really love about the Dangerfield selection is the fact that he's got a massive ceiling. I'm pretty sure it's from round 14. He's had three 160-plus scores. So if you're looking for a captaincy option this week, 
He's coming up against Melbourne, got a pretty good history against him, played two out of the last three games against Melbourne, and I think he's gone 140 plus on both occasions. So he could be definitely a shout out this week if you are looking for a captaincy option. If you are looking for a forward and you got 550, get Dangerfield into your side. I think he should have a pretty solid game. Uh, Stringer, 147. Spills absolutely loves this bloke. He's an Essendon supporter, so you can see why. Uh, look, recent form, we're talking about the last half of the season, been pretty good. Um, in the past, he'd been an absolute burn man, just one week on, one week off. But he has stayed pretty consistent. Even his poor games, particularly in the last half of the season, aren't extremely poor. He still manages to get by, um, even with a below par type score. So Stringer there with a 147 was massive last week. My man Aaron Hall, I think he's just one of the safest options you can go with. He'll be good for 100 plus every day of the week. Uh, there's been one time in the last 12 weeks, I think, where he's gone under 100. So if you're looking for 100 plus, Aaron Hall, nice and easy there. Jordan DeGowie, again, this man's been in great form. A couple of 80s though in the last four weeks, but he also has delivered with a couple of really nice 120 plus type scores. So with Dugowie, he's got that midfield role. I think he's a good selection to bring into your side. I like all the players that I've discussed so far here. And Rowan Marshall, really poor score from him last week. Disappointing because I thought, particularly coming up against Stanley, who I don't rate as, you know, an elite ruckman, I thought that Marshall would take care of him and deliver me another nice one. But unfortunately, it wasn't the case. But here's a bit of a point of difference. 10.7% uh, of sides... Uh, Strings obviously is a massive pod there in 4%, but the other guys are relatively highly selected players. Degowie, 13%, not huge. Um, and that's all That's all the selections we've got there. So just the six. Uh, if we take a look quickly, so I'll just go up again. At average, so I've got Zorko there, obviously at the top. Against West Coast this week, I'm hoping and expecting him as our leader to set the tone again for our pressure. And 100 plus, I think, is coming from Zorko. So, look, there's not a player there that I would be against bringing into your side. Um, just basically go with the one that you think has a high ceiling for this particular round. Um, yeah, any one of the selections, I give a thumbs up to, I think. Uh, on the next range here, we'll look at 400 to 500k. Nick Hines with a 133. He's been a little bit up and down hasn't he? What's he got for a season average now? 92.8. I thought that could be closer to a 95 plus. So a little bit disappointing, but these games tend to balance things out when you get a really nice one with a 133 and then you get your 70. At the end of the day, that's a 101.5 average. So I think that's what Hines been doing at times this year. But the man underneath him, Chadley Wingard, I'm absolutely against this pick in normal circumstances, but there is only one game to go. Coming up against Richmond has been in fine form, this man. I think if you go by three-round average, there we go. He's right up the top. So 122 for a three-round average. Five-round up with a 105. He's still second for a five-rounder as well. So that's the form that this man is in. You see Big Pete there with a 108 for that. Where is Pete in the three-rounders? Uh, down a little bit, isn't he? Yeah, but anyway, uh, back to Chad. Now, he's a real burn man, I think, Chad Wingard, but what we see with him at times is a great game and then a really poor game. A lot of it is related to his role. Um, sometimes it seems like when things just aren't going right, sort of puts a head down, but when they're up and about, Wingard's normally up and about, so a bit of a barometer, I think, for Hawthorne. But if you look at that recent form, you certainly can't deny that. If you're looking for a pod, this is the man to bring in this week, I think. So not even in 1% of sides, I know why that's the case because, you know, I mentioned that we've just never seen any consistency of this man's game, or we haven't in years and years, probably after his All-Australian years. But at under 500k, I think he's the man that you probably look to bring in this week. Uh, Kennedy as well, Cripps wasn't in the side, so 130 from him. His three-rounder now is 113.3. Five-rounder is now 97, so pretty impressive from Kennedy as well. Uh, Laddams is, is a peanut, can't stand him. Uh, Tommy Hawkins, whoops, let's go up. Sorry, it's really touchy. Computer I'm using at the moment. So Tommy Hawkins here with 109 last week. Dale, again with a 108, relies on those kick-ins. So uh, Snelling, surprising with a 103. Isaac Smith, 
He's out of rest now, so he could be a decent pod, but I'd much rather go wing guard. I think he's got a higher ceiling. Smith will pretty much get you close to 100, though. I think that's the way that he's gone lately. Um, McStay, a 101. Really interesting. His three-round average is also a 101, so he's been in pretty solid form. Talk about a pod, 0.2% of sides. And uh, look, McGovern isn't playing this week. West Coast are really, really struggling, but would you dare bring him in at 424 I certainly don't think so, but hey, you can't deny three-round average. It is what it is. Uh, Luke Jackson against Geelong. Yeah, we saw Rowan not score overly well, didn't we, against Geelong? So, yeah, look, I'm not sure with this selection, possibly, um, but I'd much rather one of the blokes up the top. Again, the price point is a lot different there. So we are talking within 100K here for the different price ranges. So, yeah, maybe for Luke Jackson. Uh, Heaney... Uh, <laughs> Will he get injured? Will he smash out 100 plus? I'm just not too sure. Always an option, I suppose. Side bottom with an 85. He's been in better form recently. Uh, so what's his three rounder? 95, five rounder 94. So not too bad, but just been a terrible selection during the year. Talk a little bit about two meter Peter. He's been in fine form. Uh, lower game for him last week, but apart from that, yep, he's been great. Taron Thomas with a 68. That week before he had that delayed concussion, he was looking like a terrific selection. I think that was a week where lots of people were looking to replace Dusty. But after that, just really hasn't happened for him, unfortunately. So, yeah, he, he looks fantastic, though, like a, a, an awesome player. Could bounce back this week against Adelaide, um, but not too sure. And around that 491k, probably some better options. Big Charlie against the Doggies. I think Keith is back this week. Probably wouldn't go there. Uh, Dunkley... Yeah, 61. So, look, I'm really enjoying that because I want to select him next year in my forward line. I'm assuming he will have mid-forward status again, and that's just great for me. You know, the lower his average gets this year, the cheaper he's going to be for me next year. So I'm hoping he just has another terrible game this week just to bring that price point down because what's his season average now? Dunkley, 106. That was really close to 120, or it was 120 plus, I'm pretty sure. So that's really nice for me in regards to his price point next year. Uh, Langford, no, more didn't play, didn't play. Then we get to the DMPs. So, uh, yeah, probably Wingard's man that I'd look at there. And then maybe a Hawkins and a Dale type. Nick Hines, okay. Never been a big fan of Cybottom. Thomas maybe is a pod. But, yeah, Wingard's man that I'd be going for in that range, I think. Can't believe I'm saying that, but it's only for a week, remember. Uh, and the next one, so we've got... Will Haywood, this is 300 to 400k this range. Haywood with 135. Fritch with 132. Had a really solid season. Fritchie, super coach wise, now a 68. Terrible, terrible. O'Brien, yeah, once in a lifetime type thing from him. Uh, Mitch Lewis, no way. Zach Bailey, sorry, apologies. I'm going to stop mucking around with that. He had a really good week with 110 last week. Uh, 388,000. I think he's a really good selection if you're looking around this price range. So I like him a lot better than any of the blokes that you see there. Um, who else we got? Charlie Cameron had a good one. Joey Danaher, been in okay form. Uh, Tom Lynch, 100. Again, three figures there for him. Uh, Butters with a 96. Absolute lock for me, I think, next year, uh, particularly at his price point. Zerha had a pretty solid season. Darling, will he step up? Uh, and Kennedy's absence. Stevenson, one of Spills blokes that he's brought in. Done pretty well with Stevenson, has Spills at his price point. Uh, Bolton, 355, 80. Well, people are probably celebrating an 80 if you own him after what he's been pumping out. Uh, so nothing else much there. We'll take a look at the three round average. So we've got Stack there with a three-round of a 103. Okay, Benny Brown, 91.7. Butters again, so maybe Butters. A decent selection there around the price of Bailey. Bailey there, still in the top 10. Yeah, so probably Butters or Bailey are the blokes that are like there. Stack possibly, if you're looking at that three-round average, and they're basically at the same price point. But uh, you'd probably prefer Zach Bailey if I had to choose one and uh, against an undermanned West Coast side. Butters against the Dogs, how's he going to match up there? I'm not too sure. I don't know if the opposition matches too much with Butters. Really talented type player, but uh, has his in 
obviously had his injury issues this year. Uh, Wood did not play. Benny Brown, possibly against Geelong, probably not. Uh, and Sydney Stack, yeah, I have no great confidence there. But the three-rounder suggests that he's a man that's in form uh, in this price range. So we move on to the next range now. Uh, it's only one bloke here, almost two blokes. He managed to hit three figures. Uh, Fogarty there, three-rounder of 66, though. Yeah, certainly nothing to write home about. Uh, Strawn, Ruck forward, uh, coming for Rob, obviously. Yeah, look, who knows? Who's he coming up against North Melbourne? I think Rob's out, is he, for the rest of the season? So maybe Strawn. Uh, Eddie Ford. Yeah, nothing much here, is there really? Let's look at Coleman Jones. Does he get a game again? Maybe. Cockatoo, 65. Uh, Pickett, maybe. We've seen that he's got a decent ceiling. When I talk about decent ceiling, you know, he can get 90 to 100 type scores. Uh, Bowie, pretty good looking prospect. Sharman, don't mind the look of him as well. Uh, Waterman, Oscar Allen against Brisbane. Parker, pretty down game for him. He's looked okay other weeks. Uh, Waitman, never know what he can do. He's always... Uh, got the possibility to go around the 80 mark. Uh, Common got a 35. Yeah, so if you look at, we'll go to the three rounders for these blokes. Uh, Strong only played the one game, Briggs, you know. Yeah, so no massive names there, is there? I don't think anyone of, of great note. No, no one really there. So I think that pretty much does us for this week and it does us for the year uh, stock market uh, video wise. Look, what I will do is I will do a bit of a review video, talk about those players that made the most cash, those players that lost the most cash and look at those really, really optimal starting picks. And this may help us while looking at some patterns going into next year when we're selecting our best 22. But uh, for now, take care guys, all the best. Hope that this helped in some small way. And good luck for any grand finals that you're in. And I suppose if you're watching this video, you've obviously got a couple of trades left. If you haven't, thanks very much for your support and watching anyway. But yeah, congratulations for having a couple of trades or even a trade in the bank going into your grand finals. You obviously skimped and saved when it came to spending your or using your trades. So well done. You've done a terrific job. As you know, yeah, it's been about three weeks for me. Um, being a member of the No Trade Club, and it has not been a good feeling. So again, guys, all the best, take care, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Cheers, bye.